Good morning. This is Sunday, the day that I'm supposed to publish this video and unfortunately this is going to be a hard backup because I was planning to throw the video from the World Masters Orienteering Champ today on the channel but my laptop gave out and unfortunately I'm not able to finish post-processing so I have to record something else and today therefore I'm going to ramble a little bit about the mindset and how mindset influences um, your performance but also your life and I'm going to share with you several stories from um, my personal life as well um, and also give you some tips at the end how you can work on your mindset which I think is important in both sport career but also in life in general so I think this should be pretty useful to everyone that maybe is not aware of the things I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's begin and I want to begin with the story that I'm also mentioning in the video about World, World Masters Orienteering Champs among other things but here it's very very elemental let's say to the topic of this video and the story was um, from the day when I was running the long final so this is this was the the last final of the championship uh, it was a very beautiful day, sunny weather, pretty hot, but not super hot, not extremely hot. I, I don't think it was above 30 degrees, but maybe something around 30 degrees. And I was preparing for the race, going to my warm-up. And usually when I go to my warm-up, my legs feel a little bit stiff at the beginning, but they, then after uh, five, seven minutes, they loosen up and I feel okay and I can run without any problems. This day, it was not the case. So even though I forced myself to run those first five, seven minutes, I still didn't feel really the power um, that I should be feeling before the um, important race. And, you know, I, I thought, okay, probably this is one of these worst days. You know, we all have this. We all have those days when you wake up and you feel full of energy and we have those days when you wake up and you don't feel full, no, full of energy. You feel a little bit down on energy and you're thinking, oh, this is not going to be a good day to perform in my top form, right? So that's how I felt during the warm-up of the long final. And then an amazing thing happened. So I was, um, I, I was stopped by one of the viewers of the videos on the channel, the guy from Brazil, I don't remember if he introduced himself, but I definitely don't remember the name, unfortunately. Uh, he did uh, say that he appreciates the work and uh, if possible, he wants to come after the race to take a photo of me. I said, sure, no problem, of course. Um, and then after a minute or two, we split again and I went to continue doing my warm-up before the race but I did notice that just this small interaction changed the way I felt suddenly and that was very interesting to me. Um, I did experience it several times before but again this was uh, the, the first time for me in a long time then it came back to me so that you know you, you don't feel very well then you have a short interaction with something you get uh, flowered let's say with positivity and suddenly my energy level spikes you know and um, for whatever reason I feel like I don't I'm not having a bad day anymore and I can actually run a solid race so I wasn't too worried about this earlier because I also know myself and I know how orienteering affects me and I knew that you know at the moment I'll grab the map when I grab the map and go into the forest few minutes later I will feel totally fine I will be able to keep going with my normal pace because orienteering is just so much fun and enjoyment for me that it influences me in this way every um, every race so I wasn't too worried about having low energy levels because I knew that they will go up when when I just start racing and I thought okay maybe I'm going to have a slower few minutes but because of this interaction, I actually started to feel like that before the race began, which was always, uh, always, which is, which is always good. You know, you always want to have that. So this, this short story shows that the tiny interaction and tiny change in your head 
influences how your body feels because there is no other explanation for it there is no way that my body suddenly go my body suddenly goes from well i feel a little bit not that strong to okay i'm full of energy and i can push hard from the very beginning it just doesn't happen right so we all have to remember that our body is steered by chemical reactions happening in our brain and in our uh, in our body as well so influencing it is theoretically very easy practically quite hard really to do but definitely possible another interesting thing uh, that visualize how this is true comes from children and if if you're old enough to have children of, of your own you probably notice this or if your children are already grown up you probably remember this there were times where um, or there are times when the child is bored and suddenly everything becomes difficult for the child and when the child is not bored it's not difficult at all the exact same thing and we get to observe it with our daughter for example when we are going hiking so currently we are in the mountains it's uh, sunday morning and we just came here for a few days to have a little bit of fun mary went for for the race uh, we are catching a little bit of pokemons and walking around a lot and normally when we tell hannah well, look we are going to the mountains to do some hiking she's like no can i please stay home you know um, because she is afraid that she will just have to walk along the trail and this is boring to her and she doesn't have the energy to push forward because there is a cat over there <laughs> because uh, she doesn't find it attractive you know but i do remember i do remember trips when we took her for 20 kilometer walks and simply because those walks were interesting and something cool was happening along the way she was not complaining at all so i know that 20 kilometers is completely within her range uh, but on other days after two kilometers she already starts complaining how tired she is because in her head she already is tired because she doesn't want to go anymore because it's boring because of her mindset you know so a simple story that visualizes how um, the mindset affects the performance at least uh, in children but it does also happen for the adults it does also happen for the for the adults and i'll tell you a little bit of a story from my own perspective as well so i'm a very introverted person and whenever i'm um, supposed to go to a party for example this is not my cup of tea you know and even in my primary school i was the person that during the party i was standing somewhere up to, to the wall and not really uh, integrating a lot <clears throat> and it continued in my adult life but at some point in time i thought okay as an adult i am going to be participating in uh, different kinds of parties so it's a little bit silly to behave like that during parties i need to figure out a better way of doing this so i thought to myself what if i treat those parties as a kind of a challenge and i thought what if i'll try to be the most social person around uh, around there at the party i'll try to be the person that dances the most at the party i'll try to talk to as many people as possible and try to learn some interesting things about them you know so this is the mindset that i carry on now to the parties i go to uh, like weddings new year eve parties whatever it is and i actually find them enjoyable now because thanks to those activities that i'm kind of forcing myself to do over there um they became fun tiring yes so after the party i definitely need to rest and stay by myself for a while but uh, definitely the party itself is a lot more interesting so i'm glancing over there all the time because this is the guide came To have some fun with me today hey little fella don't bite the cables <laughs> all right anyway <clears throat> so this party thing it kind of uh, again shows that if i'm going to the party with the mindset that 
I don't want to be there. It's tiring, painful, and I'm not enjoying them at all. But if I go to the party with the mindset that I want to challenge myself to be someone else for the evening, for the night, that is doable. And I do enjoy them really, right? So again, visualizes how just thinking about how you're going to approach things changes. First of all, the perspective, but second of all, the experience itself, you know? So there is no doubt in my mind that how you think about what's going to happen influences how it is actually going to happen. And I think that there are several ways of learning how to do those mind tricks, let's call them. Not Jedi stuff, but maybe not that far away from it really. And I think that the areas that um, allow for human beings in general to be better at this are self-talk or positive self-talk, for example, visualization, meditation, you know, and if you feel like these are uh, one, one more thing that I want to add to the list, I guess would be um, gratefulness, practicing gratefulness, which also opens you up to being more empathetic to the world itself. So I feel like practicing those areas is something that will allow you to get better in putting your head in the right place. And I do want to touch a little bit deeper on one of those areas, meditation in particular, because I feel like many people think about meditation as something mystic, something that is reserved only to the people that are, you know, um, deeply inspirited. And I don't think this is true because I I did experience um, meditation for several years now and I did practice meditation in different forms. And there are tens or hundreds of different ways you can do meditation. So, so for, 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 for many people that have no experience with it, you're thinking or the people are thinking that the meditation is, you know, you're just sitting down, your legs crossed, your hands like this, and you're trying to empty your mind. And yes, this is a form of meditation, but one of them and not the only one that exists over there. So that you can do the same thing without sitting. You can actually lay down. You can be standing, for example. And my experiences with different kinds of meditation, which was a journey for me because I was searching for a way that I can meditate in a way that actually helps me and not frustrates me. Um, it took me all the way to walking meditation and just walking and thinking about things and trying to sort stuff in my head by doing this. And it helps and it works. And I feel like the same thing can be do while you're running. So you're probably a runner and when you're doing the running by yourself and you're running along the route that you know and you don't have to think about where you have to go, it's actually a great time to meditate. And again, the meditation doesn't have to be about emptying your head. The meditation can be about letting the thoughts flow through you. And this is the one I enjoy the most. So I'm going for a walk. I'm letting the thoughts come to me and I'm not doing anything with them. I'm just letting them fly by, you know, and I notice that my head is jumping from one topic to another, to another, to another. And those topics are very often not related at all, completely different stuff. But then an amazing thing happens. After like 20 or 15 minutes, the flow of those thoughts slows down and my mind starts to calm. And I am able from that point on forward to actually focus on certain topics that I want to think about a little bit more. I want to structure them a little bit more in my head, put the things together, make a plan, for example, for something, come up with some uh, insightful ideas, stuff like that. And then I can use this time not only to um, clear my head and calm down, but also to structureize and strategize. I don't know if that's the right word, be, become strategic about some of the things that I'm planning for uh, in the near future. So that's a wonderful time I can actually spend with myself uh, that helps me get better in whatever I'm planning to do in the upcoming future. So therefore, that's a meditation, right? And it's just 
again, one of the ways of doing it, and it works for me. It doesn't have to work for you because what works for one person doesn't necessarily have to work for the person right next to it, to him or her. Um, so I, I guess what I'm saying is don't be afraid of trying it out and experimenting with it a little bit and finding your own way because one way or another, um, that it doesn't matter how you do it. What matters is that you do it because there are many scientific studies at this point in time and all of them almost um, surely point to the same direction. If you start doing meditation regularly from uh, uh, already after a week or two, there are changes in the brain happening that transform the way you're thinking about the things that surround you, the people that surround you. You become more empathetic. It's easier for you to put yourself in the shoes of another person and think about why people behave the way they do and be more understanding towards them, which in general is just simply super helpful in life. And at the same time, practicing meditation, visualization, gratefulness, self-talk, these are the ways to help you put the, the, your mind in the right place. And this will be extremely helpful when you're a sports person, but it also will be very helpful to everybody and in all your areas of life, really. So I guess for this video, I just want to say that if you aren't doing it already, it's definitely an area worth exploring. So don't be shy about it. Spend an hour a week at least uh, thinking about how you can become better at this and just experiment with stuff and see what clicks and discard the things that don't. And that's it. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, consider giving this video a like, even though it's just a filler in the channel. But I guess that's how life is sometimes. I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.